we're shaking off the tube. My name's Cam. Today I want to chat with you about something really interesting, something quite fascinating. And it's something you either know all about or it's something you've never f***ing heard of in your life. What I'm talking about is the hero's journey, or also known as Joseph Campbell's monomyth. But Cam, what is Joseph Campbell's monomyth? <laughs> this is based off a theory of recognizable pattern or structure in stories involving an adventure or a quest. Now this would apply most easily to fantasy, although I feel it would also apply to things like action and arguably even a lot of genres you wouldn't expect, including romance, at at least a certain number of points. But I'll, I'll get to that later. So there was a guy right named Joseph Campbell and he wrote a book back in like 1950? It was called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Dope superhero? No. Terrifying villain? Please God, no. Please stop. Joseph was a professor who did quite a lot of extensive research into mythology and at a certain point he realized that there was a bit of a pattern he was noticing. There were recognizable checkpoints along all of these heroes quests that he was able to put into a bit of a diagram. Before I get into that, I do want to make it clear that the hero's journey, this cycle, it's not a bad thing. It's not something you want to avoid. All it is is patterns and patterns that we obviously connect with on a deeper emotional level. So if anything, I would actually advise against actively avoiding this. <coughs> Hear me, wise guy? Don't do it. Or else. Anyway, here's the cycle here. We're going to have a look at each checkpoint, so don't worry. And while we do that, I'm going to use The Hobbit as an example, because I think The Hobbit is probably just... It's just the easiest example we could possibly use here. But here's what I want you to do while we're watching this video right now. Before I get into it, I want you to choose your favorite adventure, quest, story, whatever. You could choose Harry Potter. You could choose, you know, Star Wars, whatever. Just it doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to be a book. Just choose a story that kind of revolves around a hero's quest. Or if you're feeling extra clever, just pick another story entirely and see if you can match it up anyway. And as we go through this, it's OK if you can't find a way to match it up. All it means is that it means you suck. Hey, shut the f up. Now, the first thing you'll notice looking at this uh, diagram is that it is separated into the ordinary world and the special world. And that's very important, especially when you see the checkpoints that fall into the ordinary world and the checkpoints that fall into the special world. At least for me, the reason I think it's uh, set this way is because the checkpoints that fall within the special world are the most transformative points of the story for the hero. It is what allows them to return to the ordinary world as a different person. The transformative checkpoints of the hero's journey is what shapes their character arc. It's what allows them to learn and grow. So checkpoint number one is the status quo. It's the world as we know it. We're introduced to just how things are. For Bilbo, that's reasonably good. Bilbo's living the high life. He's Chowing on fish and bread on the reg. Bilbo's smoking that pipe weed like he's in a fucking Snoop Dogg music video. But the Turkish in Bilbo also has him craving a bit more. He's, he's a bit bored with his monotonous lifestyle and he yearns for something that he doesn't quite understand. It doesn't always have to be this chill. In other stories, the status quo could be a world in turmoil. It could be a world without magic. It could be a world where actual literal rainforests burn for fucking weeks before anyone even notices. <laughs> Yikes, am I right? So after that, we have the call to adventure and it's pretty easy for the Hobbit. It's quite literally a wizard coming and asking him to go on an adventure. And the interesting thing is that in most cases, this call to adventure will result in the hero saying no, it's a, a refusal, or at the very least, it'll be hesitance. We do not want any adventures here. Thank you, not today. <laughs> not and there's actually quite a bit of importance to this because if that decision to accept the call to adventure was easy, then we wouldn't feel as invested in this being the potential to be life-changing for the hero. The decision to leave their status quo and do the adventurous or brave thing is meant to be what separates them from other people who would have call to adventures as well, but simply say no. And it's with that in mind that it needs to be a difficult decision for them, and usually they will begin by saying no. But that's where we go to crossing the threshold. This is the important point I was talking about. This is when the hero actually accepts 
the call to adventure and they leave the comfort of their home. They make the decision that theoretically would mean there is no turning back. They've officially separated themselves from the sheep by accepting the call to adventure and crossing the threshold. I'm going on an adventure! So the Road of Trials is the fun stuff. It's, it's really easy to identify in like adventure and quest stories. It's all of the mini levels before the final boss, so to speak. In The Hobbit, an example of that is pretty easy. It's just the three trolls, which in regards to the movies was the birth of one of my favorite quotes from the entire trilogy. I've got parasites as big as my arm. Approach. So approach is basically the first major setback. This is where we feel like Maybe it's not all going to go well, and generally results in a kind of trial. For The Hobbit, that would be Bilbo making the decision that he's going to turn around and go home, he's going to leave the quest because he feels like he's a burden on the other dwarves. But ultimately, he ends up stuck within the depths of the Goblin Tunnels, and this is when he encounters Gollum and has a bit of a battle, so to speak, although it's more a battle of wits. He's not just trying to outsmart Gollum in the riddles that they're giving back and forth to each other, but he's using the riddles to try and trick Gollum so that he can escape safely. Ordeal. So ordeal is another one of the most important parts of the whole hero's journey. This is what I would say is the major transformative moment for the hero. This is where they're faced with an extreme moral dilemma or intense physical challenge. In my opinion for Bilbo, this was just after they escaped the goblin tunnels and he now has the ring which allows him to go invisible and he has the decision to follow through with going back home or does he rejoin the company of the dwarves and continue to risk his life for their benefit. Or another even better example of an ordeal for Bilbo could be, at least in regards to the movie, when he truly for the first time puts his life on the line to protect Thorin, a guy who up until now had shown nothing but disdain and distrust for Bilbo. Bilbo jumped in there on his own and said, Not today, motherfucker. This ordeal is where Bilbo proves that he's not just the burden that Thorin, rightfully so, thought he was. After that we jump to reward, which is quite generally a physical reward. Maybe it's a new sword, maybe it's a new superpower. In Bilbo's case you could quite easily say it's the ring. Although I would say that the reward in this situation is actually the respect he gets from Thorin as a result of the ordeal. By risking his life, he is finally respected and loved by Thorin and the dwarves. So then we have Magic Flight, which I think is just a way of saying the story is segueing into the next major thematic change. Or in the case of, you know, Bilbo and that, you could say a, quite literally a Magic Flight. And then we have Return. So this is the point in the story, the calm before the storm, where it feels like it's becoming a bit more safe and comfortable for the hero and his or her companions. In The Hobbit, that would be the comfort and security that they find in Lake Town. They roll into Lake Town, Thorin's like, yo, I'm king under the mountain. Bingo blammo, they get instant clout. Before you know it, the dwarves are all iced the fuck out. They're getting all that salted pork. Salted pork? Yeah, yeah boy. Salted pork. The intention of return is to kind of lure you into a false sense of security before the actual climax of the story. And that climax takes place in Resurrection. This is basically the final fight or the big conflict that puts the hero in a situation where they need to use all of their rewards, all of the things they've attained along their journey. And I'm including, you know, knowledge and skills superpowers, weapons, whatever, everything they've attained as a person or physically through the course of the story, all of that is necessary for them to come out on top now. This needs to be a fight that they couldn't have won unless they had gone through all the crap in that quest. For Bilbo, that could be using his newfound courage to confront a dragon, which is something he absolutely would not have done otherwise. And although he's still nervous, he's obviously in a much better place than he would have been otherwise, especially considering he now has the ring. So after that's all done and dusted, we have the resolution. The resolution speaks for itself. It's just the hero returning to the status quo, but returning a completely changed person. Because Bilbo rolls back into the Shire, an adventurer now, and he's he's got mad fucking stacks, bro. The resolution is the point where we are told how the status quo has changed from the beginning. Now in The Hobbit, the status quo doesn't actually change that much because the Shire is just, it's the Shire. But with a lot of other stories, obviously it's a new world order, it's a tyrannical government, 
uh, torn down and now, now everyone's living democratically and free or whatever. The resolution is showing us why we went on this big quest, what the ultimate reward was. So yeah, that's the hero's journey. Like I said, pretty much any adventure or quest story, you can apply that and I feel like you're going to have a pretty easy time matching it up. Maybe even with other genres, I feel like at least a couple of romance stories would follow a lot of the same checkpoints. Let me know how you went in the comments below. Let me know what story you chose to roll through it with. I really didn't know much about this at all until just a couple of days ago and then I looked into it and it was just extremely interesting and I think it's a very interesting thing to uh, keep in mind while you're writing your own story. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Catch ya. She's got class and style, sweet knowledge by the pound, yeah. Baby, never act wild, very low key on the profile. Catching feelings is it all. Let me show you how it goes. Love's the worst, fear's the best.